Hello AWS users. We are here with a demo of our latest generally available integration, Amazon RDS for MySQL Zero ATL integration with Amazon Redshift. My name is Rohit Vashisht and I'm a Senior Tech Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. Let's get started with the demo. When you create an Amazon RDS Zero ATL integration to Amazon Redshift, it will sync your data from RDS storage layer to Amazon Redshift Managed Storage. It's called seeding of the data. Once your integration is created and is active, all ongoing transactions are then synced near real time using the change data capture or CDC, using the CDC logs or ongoing transaction logs. If you want to prevent unwanted data at schema or table level to be avoided during seeding or CDC process, you can apply include or exclude wildcards on schema and table name strings. You can do this either during integration creation or by modifying existing integration to apply data filters. Let's look at seeding, data filtering and CDC in this demo. Log into AWS Management Console. I would require RDS, Amazon Redshift and EC2 consoles. And let's load test data for seeding and some unwanted data to create data filters. Navigate to EC2 console, connect to it using Session Manager. We will use this instance to connect to RDS for MySQL. Pick the host name for your RDS for MySQL instance by navigating to Amazon RDS. Go to Databases, choose your RDS for MySQL instance and copy the endpoint from under Connectivity and Security tab. Navigate back to the Session Manager, type MySQL-H, the host name, hyphen capital P for port number. Here note that we are using 6612 while the default port number is 3306. Further connect using your credentials, connect it to MySQL. Now we are going to create a sample database seeding demo along with a sample table customer info which will be treated as our existing table present in the database before the integration was created. This will demonstrate us the seeding process. Loaded 5000 rows in the customer info table in the seeding demo schema. Schema and database are often interchangeably used in MySQL. Let's create another database filter missing PK wherein we'll create another table customer info and we will filter this data during our integration creation. This is typically done for tables without primary keys. Similar data loaded for customer info table in the filter missing PK schema. This will get filtered out during the integration creation. This will become a demonstration of the data filters. All right then, time to create zero ATL integration. Navigate to Amazon RDS, select zero ATL integrations from left nav, click on the create zero ATL integration button. A wizard will open. In step one, give your integration a name and description. I'm going to use zero ATL demo RDS MySQL. Description demo. Click next. In step two, select the source. Browse your RDS database. Choose the RDS for MySQL instance. You will get an error to fix parameter values. Your source required couple of parameters to be set as a prerequisite that was not taken care of. The fix it for me checkbox will let the wizard do it for you on your behalf. So check the fix it for me checkbox. Note that the parameter group change requires a reboot of your source RDS MySQL cluster. Next, we'll apply data filters by checking customize data filtering options. Here we'll select exclude anything which is in schema filter underscore missing PK. So we'll use filter underscore missing PK dot star as our exclusion criteria. Click next. The wizard will show you the changes it will make to take care of the source prerequisites. It will create a new group with parameter bin log format as row, bin log row image as full, and then associate the group with the RDS MySQL cluster and then reboot the cluster. Go ahead, click reboot and continue. In step three, select target, browse your Redshift data warehouse. Select the destination of your zero ATL integration and click on choose. Again, this will throw an error for fixing resource policy and case sensitivity parameter. This time the target prerequisites are not set. And again, the fix it for me checkbox is going to let the wizard take care of the target prerequisites for you. The wizard will make two changes on the target side. First, it will authorize the integration source RDS for MySQL to create a zero ATL integration to Amazon Redshift. MySQL by default is case sensitive while Redshift is case insensitive by default. 
So the second prerequisite is to enable case sensitive identifier. Review both the changes and click on continue. I'm not going to change the default encryption, so just click next on step four. Finally, in step five, you have to review and create the zero detail integration. Now remember, our source and target prerequisites are still being met by the wizard. So let's look at their status. There will be a progress bar on the top. You can click on the view details button in the progress bar to view the progress of the changes that the wizard is making on your behalf. Both the target changes were quick and completed. Let's look at the source changes now. So as you can see, a new parameter group was created. Then the parameter group was modified for those two parameters. Then the parameter group was associated with the database. And finally, the reboot of the instance is going on right now. Takes about a couple of minutes to reboot the cluster. So let's resume in a couple of minutes. Okay, all settings applied. Let's quickly review our changes one more time. And then finally scroll down and click on create zero ATL integration. The status of zero ATL integration will appear as creating. The first time creation of a zero ATL integration takes about 15 to 30 minutes to complete. This involves the setup of resources, the seeding process, and finally turning on your integration. You can also monitor the status of your zero ATL integration from the Amazon Redshift console. Our destination is a Redshift serverless, so we'll go to serverless dashboard and then navigate to the namespace configuration. You'll see the status of your serverless namespace as modifying. That's normal. Go to the zero ATL integrations tab. You'll see the status of your zero ATL integration as creating. Let's resume the video after 15 to 30 minutes. All right, uh, almost 20 minutes have passed. Let me just quickly refresh and see if the status of the integration has turned from creating to active. The integration is active. As you can see on the top, there's a create database from integration button. You can use this button to create the destination database. Another way of creating the database is by going to query editor v2 on the left nav. Log into the Redshift serverless data warehouse, which is the destination for your zero ATL integration. Select the integration ID from the SVV integration table. And then you can create the database from integration using the integration ID from the result of previous query. Remove white spaces if any. Create the database. The source to destination zero ATL integration is now ready to be validated. Explore the tree view panel in the query editor v2. Go to the Redshift serverless destination. Open RDS MySQL underscore zero ATL database. You should see the seeding demo schema, but not the filter missing PK schema. This demonstrates that the seeding and the data filtering were successful. Let us now validate CDC. Go back to the session manager and open the RDS MySQL connection. We will create a new schema called CDC demo, create a new sample table, insert a new dummy record, and also append a couple of records to our existing seeding demo.customer info table. Now let's validate on the target that all these changes were almost immediately replicated on the target database. Refresh the tree view panel, go to your Redshift serverless destination, open the zero ATL integration database. The CDC demo schema was created almost immediately, and we can see the sample table with dummy record, as well as the two new records to the seeding demo table did get appended. So that concludes our CDC demonstration. To monitor your zero ATL integrations, Ensure your role has sysmonitor privileges and then you can monitor your zero ATL integrations from Amazon Redshift console. Go to zero ATL integrations tab, click on your integration and you can look at the integration metrics like lag, tables replicated, success failure. And you can look at table statistics to see when the tables were last updated. I would like to conclude this demo with a famous quote. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. We sincerely appreciate your interest and time. Thank you so much for watching.